Yeah. Hey everyone, here with Matt Vincent, one of my best friends and former World Highland Games champion. It means he threw the caber. You've been an athlete your whole life. And the reason, of course, we're having this talk with Matt in his incredible gym is that Matt is the youngest person I know, youngest athlete I know, to have had a total knee replacement. 36. 36. So your story, let me just summarize. You threw in high school, played football in high school. You threw at LSU, mm -hmm. which is a pretty amazing place. So the kinds of training you've been doing your whole life is high level sport athletic training where it's not bro bodybuilding. No. It's Olympic lifting. You're very strong. You're one yeah, of my- High power output. You're one of my strongest friends. So, when did you first have a knee injury? Did you go right from throwing to total knee replacement? No, so tore an ACL in college, got it fixed, was totally fine. We did a patella tendon graph. I competed on it the rest of my time in college, no issues. I had a freak accident at a skate park, hyperextended the knee, popped the ACL. And then since I was 22 without insurance or any of those things, I decided to just ride it out. That's pretty common, a lot of people who are looking at are faced with the option of a total knee replacement or knee arthroplasty, have had a history of knee trauma, right? And then they've managed it as long as they can. Did you go from there to knee replacement? It's a little crooked road. <laughs> long way around the bar. Yeah, so in 2016, I finished my final Highland Games season. I finished second in the world, but I could, I could tell that I, I couldn't get hip extension anymore because I couldn't push the knee. And so, all right. We'll take 2017, we'll do another ACL, we'll fix the knee, I take a year off rehab, come back to the sport. Didn't quite work out that way. I ended up having eight other knee surgeries, so four of those being ACLs that just didn't take. My body doesn't do cadaver tissue, from what I can understand. Then I did a high tibial osteotomy, trying to get rid of the medial pain out of my knee. I did an OATS procedure, which I don't recommend for anyone. You basically went on a tour of knee possibilities. I did all the options that I could before total knee. When you finally, what, what was the moment where you needed, you were like, okay, I need to do this. Total knee replacement is the option. That's miserable. I, I couldn't walk up and down stairs anymore. I had about, my credits for the day were, were about two to 300 yards. That's it. That's all I can walk before I'm done. Not a cool way to live. And so the final conversation I had with my surgeon prior to that was, he didn't want to do it because I'm 36. And I expressed, I think this is a thing I need to do. And I said, I, I need to figure out an option to get out of the place I'm in or I need to get rid of the leg. These are, these are what I care about. So my knee replacement, I didn't have any pain. I had swelling, but my knee wouldn't do what I needed it to do. Sure. And I'm 47, so 10 years older than you, but was starting to have whingy feelings the knee would be weak. I just suddenly, the things that I would do with my family were gone. Right. But that's a little different than your situation. Yeah, it was the chronic pain is, is what finally got me. And it's the surgeries that wore everything out. You know, the intentions we had were to fix things, but you're still removing parts. And so even going into that knee replacement and talking to my doctor, I'm like, man, I, I need some type of know here that this is gonna help. Because I'm terrified. And he was like, well, Everything we've done so far is trying to fix an old car and remove parts. He says, now we're putting in brand new parts that don't have any damage. And I was like, well, that, that makes sense to me. Did you wake up out of pain? We had surgical pain, right? We had topical tissue damage, those Sur types of things. Surgical pain is real. But the first, they had me up and walk, know, as soon as I'm awake, essentially. And that first walk down the hall, I knew the pain that I had been chasing to get rid of was gone and it's never been back. That's amazing. I, I, I got super emotional after that walk finished, and I was like, it's gone. Like, that feeling's gone. I mean, man, it got so bad and so inflamed that I would get a nine out of 10 shooting pain on exhaling. And I just wanna be clear, you didn't go 10 out of 10 because- It doesn't exist. <laughs> That's you. I'm not on fire <laughs> and my legs inflamed. That's right. That would be worse. So it's pretty bad. And I'm yeah. going to just go on record as saying, known you for a long time, I witnessed and been on a trip with you when that when you're managing that knee, and it was really a difficult. Yeah, you emotion. saw one of the worst days I've ever had. That was a bad day. I can't believe I gutted that walkout, but there wasn't any other option. No, no. That's right. Between deciding to have a knee replacement, if you knew what you knew now, would you have done it earlier, or 100%. what would you have changed? I would have done it earlier. 
how would you have known but, what the right time to do it was? But you can't, right? Because had, well, had the first ACL surgery worked, I mean, it would have rehabbed and gone back to, or it did work. That one worked. If the ACL surgery in 2016 at the end of the Highland Game season would have worked and I would have rehabbed a year, I'd be throwing. I wouldn't be doing this right now. I mean, that I couldn't have just gone to knee replacement, like, because I still had an option of being able to compete still. So that's what the goal was. And then that pivoted to, that's no longer important. I have to get out of pain. Because I, if I would have just retired in 2016 and lost weight, I would have been in better shape than, than doing the total knee. But I, I wasn't going to retire. <laughs> like, like <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I'm I not think, walking away from this thing still with, with a bunch I of think, gas I left think in that, the that's the re what's reasonable is oftentimes, you know, you... Your whole business, your whole ethos, the way you react, your partner, the whole thing is really about training and enjoying your body. Six months after your knee, knee replacement surgery, we were in the desert doing a seven day bike ride, yeah. Bike ride, right? Yeah, 220 miles and what, three or so thousand feet of elevation every day? Every day. Yeah, sleep on the ground. It was perfect. That was a nice little it test. It wasn't the hot cup, cold tub therapy that I can use to make everything nice. <laughs> because one of the things that I want everyone to want you to appreciate is that for me, I've been watching about what's possible. And you have some pretty phenomenal leg mass. What would you do besides thinking about, hey, maybe I could have done this earlier and, and, and sidestepped a whole lot of chronic pain? Because it was real. It was real. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was affecting you. As a human. As a human which is one of the best reasons to have surgery that I know. What would you do differently besides, besides choosing to have the surgery early? Would you do something differently in terms of getting prepared for the surgery? I feel like I did a pretty good job on that with like trying to maintain range of motion and trying to be strong until pain got to a point that I couldn't anymore. And so I knew going in that the more mass I have here, the less inflammation I have here. So that's clean up the diet and change that. So I did, that's the whole reason I lost weight. How much weight did you lose? 60 pounds. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of inflammation. That was everything I chose to do was along those lines. Everything else, the weight loss, side effect. It helped. Like I'll take any one or 2% I could. It was just a matter of trying to figure out what I could do to stimulate the quad to keep muscle mass, but not aggravate the joint. And that gets really tricky because I can't weight bear through the bottom of the femur. So banded TKEs, leg extensions with an occlusion band, those type of things made a really big difference of being able to keep size on. And then once I got out of surgery, it was right back to those as soon as I could. Occluded stuff, using the power dot or any other type of muscle stem to get that thing firing, pull it off, get blood through through it. I mean, that was everything we talked about. Go, and go through the surgery was, okay, we got to get the quad back online. How important was sleep to you during this time? <sighs> it's, it's critical. You're not going to heal if you can't sleep. And that was one of the issues over that three-year time period with the chronic pain is I, you just don't sleep because I can't get into a comfortable position. I also, in that three-year time period, spent 26 weeks in a straight leg brace or on crutches. Yeah. Afterwards now, going back... Were there some things you felt like you should have doubled down on? Because I would say that this is a pretty successful recovery, post-surgical recovery. And I don't use the word rehab. I use the word rehab in hospital settings. Since you're out of the hospital, now we're training with an injury, mm -hmm. training post-surgery. And that's really what I watched you do. Is there some things you would double down on in terms of, or that you would highlight in terms of importance of post-surgical training? I spent a year after the total knee still trying to train the way I wanted to train, like the way I had always loved training. So I was always trying to get back to heavy explosive training. And it just isn't working. I'm just losing that fight. Every time I try to step in, it's like, okay, cool, now I pissed off the hip or the back hurts and I can't get into positions. And then a shift made, we talked about a few things and you're like, how about a couple days a week that you go into the gym, feel better when you leave? And that's been a big mind, uh, set shift for me was using this to make the rest of my life feel better. And so being in here and getting stimulus, but not crossing that line into the red that cost me a week. I just saw you do 30 minutes of kettlebell swings and sled drags and pressing. I think a lot of people who are facing this knee surgery would be content with that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not mad about it. 
You have a, a little, you've picked up running lately. <laughs> well, I'm dabbling. <laughs> you just ran a seven and a half minute mile, which is not yeah. slap, right? For our size and what's going on. What are you training for right now for that seven and a mile? Training um, for a, at the end of May, I have an 18 mile trail run in Bryce Canyon. I'm doing some friends out there. They're doing the 50, I'm doing the 18. Did you think you would be able to do that ever? Ever? No, never. The first time it, it clicked that something else was going on, I was in Montana and I went for a, a morning walk and decided like, feel a little froggy, take a couple little runs and then it didn't bother me. It didn't hurt, the hip didn't hurt. So I ended up running a 5K that morning, a lot of walking, but 5K overall. And I got really, I started crying afterwards because I was never supposed to be able to do this again. And not like, the, it's not that the doctor said, you can't run. I knew that I was never going to do that again. I couldn't walk upstairs. And let's be clear, running isn't your primary sport. You are not, because never. we know that long distance running on these joint surfaces is a fast way to need a, need a new poly insert. Absolutely. But that's not what you're doing. It's not what I'm doing. I'm just running for 16 weeks to train for this thing, to get all the newbie gains that come from running. Like I love the new engine that's been built with the system because I've never had it. And that transfers over to the bike. It transfers over to how hard I can work at my job with the brand and doing all this. I just have bigger gas tank. And it's been a really interesting thing to get better at. When I started nine weeks ago, I was running 14 minute miles. And so now I'm doing a seven and a half. I'm not interested in getting to seven. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm interested in is how long can I cruise at 10 minutes? Bike is a big part of your life. I love it. What do you like about the bike? Doesn't hurt, that's nice. As a non-runner, it's like running, but faster. <laughs> it's like running faster. You also have- it's like fast trail running, you have it's a, the best. You have a Zwift trainer. I do, You also yeah. ride outside. Yep. Just so you you understand, Matt used to own a bike shop. Did, yeah, so that was actually, my first endeavor you, after. You have a pretty good knack for uh, going fast on the bike. I've been with you. Yeah, I can cruise. I, I, that's a that's one of those that I've got a decent gas tank and I can surprisingly keep, keep a heart rate for has, an elevator. Has that been important part of the knee? I think so, I think so. I think I have to change routes, right? Like, I mean, it would be crazy to fix it and then just keep doing the things that destroyed it. I saw you deadlift pretty heavy on this knee. What did you pull at that little meet? I pulled five, 550, I pulled 550. I think I've pulled six on the trap bar. Six on the trap bar. Yep. And my point is that the strength piece is still pretty stable. It's fine. Like you're not pulling 800, but you don't need to do that. No, I would rather be able to pull 500 for five sets of five. That's right. So the, my experience, I'm almost six months in, is the speed radical change in direction is tougher. The Olympic sure. lifting is tougher, right? I just, I just power clean hundred kilos. I'm like, that will be good for my life. Right, right. Deadlifting is much safer because I can really control and load the tissues. Do you have some things that you would suggest for people who are about to go down this pathway that they should have at home? They assault should invest bike. in an assault, assault bike. bike. Assault bike explain what the, that is. So number one tool. So it's your old Schwinn Airdyne that have been popularized by CrossFit now and they've made better versions of them that aren't gold and look like your grandmother hangs her clothes on. The best part about these is they have foot pegs, they have pedals, and they have arms. And so just as a tool to be able to stay metabolically in shape, not load the joints, if I need to hide this leg and put it on the pegs, I still have one leg and two arms. I can do arm stuff and just do sprints and never aggravate the legs. Also throwing on a band for occlusion and doing a salt bike, 10 calories. sprints. We mean occlusion, we're talking about blood flow restrictions. Blood flow restrictions, right. So using that, you can add that you'll never beat that machine. How many years out of you now from this? Two, just over two, April 9th. Do you still feel like you're making gains on your Oh yeah. How yeah. so? I'm finding again, I'm starting to push again the range of motion. Like I'm trying to see what I can get more out of the knee. I kind of backed off because the hip's been in rough shape. And so I'm avoiding annoying the hip by not really pushing the knee too much but I'm finding some other options that I can work the knee and work range of motion on the knee, but not compromise the hip. If you're looking at the, the people who are watching this, either about to go through or have gone through it, what is your like big couple takeaways? What, what are we missing? What are we getting wrong when we go in for the surgery? Pre-surgery, I, I think being as in shape as you can be, be as fit, be as healthy, be as low resting heart rate, be cardiovascularly intake, you know, intact, get diet cleaned up so that you're 
avoiding inflammation, whether that's ketogenic or whether it's a vertical diet or whatever works for you that you can do. Carnivore, plant yes. paradox, Any of really these eating like massively controlled. If you can identify everything on your plate as a single ingredient, like that's rice, that's cow, you're fine. That's a Brussels sprout. Like that's never gonna get in the way. Having that together so that you're just stacking the deck as much as you can in your favor for success coming out. It's going to be work anyway. So why not help yourself? And then after surgery, it's reps, you know, it's, it's walk, it's progression. Just like anything else. It's like, okay, today we did hundred yards tomorrow. We'll do a little bit more than that. That's it. It's just move the needle every day that you can. And the big advice too, for anyone going through it, who wants to, well, what about my strength gains? Like this, this is a question I get. And so I'm like, it's okay. They're gonna go away. However, and also your legs are gonna atrophy. That's okay too. We can get it back and it'll return back faster than you think. Yeah. It wants to come back. Once you start getting things firing and start doing some hypertrophy work or any of that, like you can get that muscle to rebuild. It's gonna be fine. So don't panic because there's no one day of training after surgery that you're gonna be strong again or fixed. But you can ruin all of this in a day. <laughs> if that's the thing, don't do that. Whatever it is, don't go and train like such a dummy that now you're back in the position you were. Like, Figure out where you can tap that line for progress. Don't ever cross it. I like to say there's a, we may have 150 things we can do in the gym, but if we can do 100, you're probably gonna be pretty good. Right, right, right. You are, you've talked about this on your podcast. Tell us where we are on the social in case people wanna yeah. see more about your journey. So podcast is uh, the UMSO podcast. I'll have an episode coming up with Kelly soon. I am, I hate Matt Vincent on Instagram and hate brand goods is my apparel company. And spell that for us so that people- It's H-V-I-I-I. -I -I. So it's H with a Roman numeral eight, hate. <laughs> And so it, uh, it goes that way. I'm not sure it was real smart when I named it that when things started, but here we are. Matt, thank you for uh, being vulnerable and talking oh, about your experience. Man.